folks. Let's start with building an arrow. What do you say? Before you can build the arrow, you have to decide how you're going to do it, with what type of clamp and jig combination. There's a lot of options out there. There's plastic jigs <clears throat> with plastic clamps. We here at Gateway believe that if you want to build consistent arrows time after time after time that are on the high point, high spine of an arrow that always give you the same results, we recommend the Bitsenberg. It's a heavy metal piece of equipment. You can hear it when you set it down. You can buy three different types of clamps. There is a straight clamp that is very straight. There is a left wing clamp and a right wing clamp. And they're both marked with a left and a right on each clamp. The straight doesn't have a marking. And we will show those to you in just a moment. Most versatility, without a doubt, it is expensive, but it will provide you with years of use. Bitsenberger. Some of the other items are good for in-field arrow repair, but if you're in-field making arrow repairs, whew, <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't bring enough arrows along with you to begin with. If you're using feathers, you won't need those extra arrows. All right. Look, Bitsenberger, that's what we recommend. It is a good clamp with a good jig. Lots of little uh, adjustments you can make. And again, we will show those to you in just a second. Folks, next is the type of arrow you're going to buy. Depending on the type of archery you are doing. You know, I'm sure that many of you will log on to this and, and really you already know what type of arrow you want. If you don't, talk to the arrow manufacturers. Get online, go to the arrow manufacturing websites. Go to Easton, go to Gold Tip, go to Victory, go to Carbon Express. Whomever you might use or purchase your arrows from, talk to them. Tell them, hey, I've got this type of bow and I'm pulling 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 70, 80, 90, whatever it is that you're pulling. You have to match the spine of the arrow, which is the bend of the arrow, to your bow. All right? Make sure you get that right. Every arrow manufacturer will have a minimum safety standard. Be safe with your arrows. Make sure that you're using the correct spined arrow for your bow. All right? Basic. Here, steel wool, triple lot steel wool. You have to scuff up the end of your arrow shaft. And this is all we're doing. We're just trying to break that carbon seal on a carbon arrow. And you do the same for aluminum. You wouldn't do it for wood, obviously. But for carbon, that's what you need to do. Okay, scuff it up where you're going to fletch. If you're using an arrow wrap, you don't have to do that. Only if you're fletching on a bare shaft. Okay. Next, take a little bit of denatured alcohol. Again, denatured alcohol. Doesn't need to be acetone, all those fancy chemicals. And clean that end that you just scuffed up. And you can hear how clean it is now. That's what kind of adhesion you want for your carbon arrow. On every arrow, on every knock, there is a raised 
indent on one side of it, okay? That goes where your knock feather goes or your cock feather, whichever you prefer. And a Bitsenberger, that knock or cock feather goes up. So you place that in your jig like so. You can turn it, you can set a Bitsenberger to three, four fletch, many different combinations. It's however you would like to fletch your arrows. What we've chosen here today, we'll build a razor feather. We're gonna shoot this out of a compound bow, shooting 300 plus feet per second. A razor feather was meant to be shot out of those modern compound bows. It is the first modern feather for modern archers. Honestly, this will guide your hunting arrows, your target arrows, through wind, rain, sleet, and snow better than the post office. Trust me, I've, I've used it. If you don't believe me, get online and talk to folks that have used the razors. They really, really work. This is a right wing feather. And we'll get into right wing, left wing, all that. We want the right wing helical. What you have to make sure that you do is that you always have it, and I need my glasses, excuse me, a certain distance from the bottom of your knot. So on all of the Bitsenberger clamps, they are marked. There's little hash marks on these clamps. And if you always use the same hash mark, your arrows will be fletched exactly the same every time. G1 glue. Gateways proprietary blend to use with feathers. It's a little bit thicker coming down the tube so that you can see it. And you just run just a thin bead right down the center of the fletching. You don't want to use too much, folks. Too much is actually worse than too little. Once we've glued that on the arrow shaft, it only takes at the most a minute. You'll be digging through your fletchings, preparing another one to be ready while your glue is drying. And, and you can grab a small flat blade screwdriver, or in this case, a razor. And if you take that, not the sharp edge, but the, the backside edge, and just make sure that all of your, your fletching, your quill, is touching that arrow shaft, is pushed down hard because the G1 glue actually adheres itself to the arrow shaft via pressure. So it's absorbed into the bottom of the feather quill and then it has to be pushed on to that carbon shaft and all the little, all the little scratches that you made in the finish of that arrow shaft with our steel wool. Okay, that's what the glue is adhering to. It's been a minute, easily take that off, rotate it, grab your next fletching, make sure that the very end fits in right where you had marked it, where your first one went, and you can double check by simply put, putting it on, placing it on there and going, okay, how does that look? Yeah, it's pretty good. but I'll adjust it because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Anyway, again, a thin bead down the center. Take it, slide it, the back end down first. And then take 
your flat edge and ensure that it's all the way down on that arrow shaft. And it is, but I just like to double check. You don't want surprises when you go to pull it off. You know, you like to do things one time and be done. I understand that. Um, that's why we have, and we recommend using one of these just along that edge so that you can get to the quill. Again, you wait a minute and then you pull this off. <clears throat> On a larger feather, you may wait a full minute. This is a razor, small feather. You're not going to get a lot of helical twist in it. I like to have a little bit. One of the things we didn't talk about is if you're using a whisker biscuit, fletch with a straight clamp with a slight offset. If you're using a whisker brisket with a hard helical, it's going to tear up, whether you're using plastic or feathers, the whisker biscuit's going to tear up your fletching. Now, if you don't mind refletching, and it's a simple process, it's okay. Fletch it with the hard helical, but you really don't need to. Take this one off. It's on. Last one. Another orange, because we've got one white and two orange. We put them in on our mark, back end on our mark. We line it up. Say, yep, looks good. We get that small bead. Running down the center. Push down, make sure it's well pushed down. And then you take that flat edge, push along the quill. And within, honestly, three minutes, you've got a refletched arrow. It's not that hard, folks. It really isn't. And in a second, we'll use just a little bit of Duco cement, all right? This type of glue is the opposite of this glue. G1 glue dries from the inside out. It dries because of pressure, because of, if I had glue here, this piece going onto this piece and I wouldn't be able to pull it apart because of the pressure. Duco cement dries from the outside in. It's like the old Elmer's type of glue. The old fletch type that folks used way back when, when there was nothing else. Duco cement, find it in any hardware store. Gateway Feathers has G1 glue. Ask for it at any retailer. Duco cement, any hardware store has it. And it'll go just on the tips. You take a little bit of Duco cement, and you dab just a, just a little bit. each end. That way, when you're shooting targets, straw bales, carpet bales, whatever it is, if you have a pass-through, your feather doesn't peel up. Okay? It's just a little bit extra that you have there on the front end it keeps the base of the quill from popping up. Saves you time. If you, if you go and buy fletched arrows from a dealer, buy a tube of Duco cement and, and put that little dab on yourself if they don't do it for you. Easy to do, great little tool. Um, 
And that's a feather fudged arrow, folks, right there. Thank you.